you know, AGC really does have a strong presence, you know, throughout California and it's so successful here and in Washington because of the people and the leaders like the ones we have in the room today. And when you produce leaders like John Noonan and Randy Douglas and Jerry Dioli and Tom Foss and Bob Christensen and your excellent CEO Tom Holzman, just to name a few, you know that something right is taking place here. And I'll tell you, we've never really needed strong chapters with active members like you as much as we really do right now. Because for me, it's been a real eye-opener to see the range of issues that Steve Sandher and the rest of our very talented AGC of America team are dealing with as really the only organization that is representing the interest of the entire construction community in Washington. And now, as I travel around the country visiting chapters, everybody's looking for some positive movement and worrying about where that next project's going to come from. You know, contractors, we're all optimists by nature, but it's tough right now, you know, with the uncertainty that seems to surround every issue affecting our lives. And many of these issues be are beyond our control, such as the European debt crisis, but in others, we can voice our concerns and we can really take steps to deal with them. Now, these issues start with an economy that's nowhere near as robust as any of us would like. You know, nationally, our construction and unemployment still exceeds 12%, which is far higher than the average for any other worker group. Construction spending has been growing, but very, very slowly during much of the year, and actually fell a bit during this summer, as the growth in GDP has continued to slow throughout 2012. Now, and also, federal spending is being reduced by cutbacks due to the deficit reduction, completion of the IRS stimulus program, completion of the BRAC program, and of course the threat of these impending fiscal cliff cuts. State and local construction budgets are very tight, but, and of course, as you know, construction happens to be very discretionary. But we're seeing some slow recovery and growth in a few sectors. Uh, the private positive markets include some power, fossil fuel, health care, higher education, and of course, uh, multi-family apartment housing, and we're starting to see a, a, a good uptick in single-family housing, and of course, manufacturing. We know that private funding has still been very difficult to get. It's been very restrictive, yet we're seeing some movement in the high-rise residential markets, and of course, in public-private partnerships, where California was an early pioneer, we're starting to see they're being used to build projects where the public funds are uh, not available. Now, we all thought this recovery would be faster, but it's not. Regardless, AGC is pushing hard to jumpstart the economy, and we produced a building a stronger future, which promotes those ideas that boost private sector demand and funding, tackles the infrastructure debt, and suggests easing of regulatory burdens. AGC also published the case for infrastructure and reform, why and how the federal government should continue to fund vital infrastructure in this new age of public austerity. Now, both of these publications are on the AGC website, and I certainly encourage you to go visit them. But there's other significant issues that will face our association, which will receive the attention at all levels during this year, and a few of those are membership. Our maintaining and growing our 30,000 members. You know, Vice President Al Landis is chairing an executive board task force that is working on this issue. As you know, we had national dues reform, which passed at the Hawaii Convention, and we're all focused on you know, the growth in our non-dues revenue. The 2012 elections are critical. At the executive board, we've discussed how to be proactive at state and local levels, and encouraging donations and the growth of our AGC PAC, promoting pro-construction and pro-growth agenda, and stressing the importance of personal visits with your congressional delegation and the impact that they have. This chart by Jeff Schoff, our chief lobbyist, indicates that the constituents really have much more power than you ever realize. And if you look at this, the first top line, in-person visits from constituents have a 97% positive influence on the person that you're speaking to about the issue that you're talking about. Doesn't matter what you do, whether as you go down the bottom, if you send a letter, if you send an email, make a phone call, or even uh, a visit from a lobbyist or an editorial, some positive action has a 75% chance of having a positive influence 
on the issue that you are uh, concerned with. So it's very important that you stress, you know, that you do it yourself, but also get your employees and the people that you know to realize this because it does have an effect. So and everybody also needs to get out there and vote. And to make sure that our members make informed votes, just recently we launched the Construction Votes website. Now this site includes voter registration information, voting records for every representative, every Senate race, and for both Governor Romney and President Obama. And it helps you find out where to vote and provides information about early and absentee voting. So there's going to be a lot of really close races coming up in the next week and a half. So we've got to make sure that everyone gets out and casts a ballot on or before November the 6th. Other issues that we're looking at, of course, are vocational training and workforce development. We're, we're working hard on in-school programs, charter schools, and the very successful programs like the Go Build Alabama and the Go Build Georgia initiatives. We're emphasizing the AGC Training, Education, and Development Forum and infrastructure funding. Now, this is a topic that Steve Sander will touch on in a few minutes. But there's other issues such as immigration reform and revising our own bylaws to comply with a new District of Columbia statute concerning the governing of nonprofit organizations. They're on a list of law of very important AGC priorities for this year. But on the bright side, however, as we face this tough economic and difficult political condition, our industry happens to be in the midst of one of the most significant and exciting transformations ever. This transformation is being brought about by technologies like BIM and SIM, which are making the construction process more efficient and more productive, but are requiring professionals to become much more technologically savvy. Business practices like early contractor involvement, design build, and lean construction are enforcing contractors to rethink those long-standing practices and breaking down the traditional silos that once existed between contractors, owners, and architects. Procurement methods where factors other than price are considered in your contractor selection. The value you bring and the skill of your staff are paramount in the selection process. And owners who are becoming more sophisticated, more involved, and more determined to drive progress through issues like green construction, energy efficiency, and sustainability. And in this changing environment, successful contractors are going to be the ones who are going to be able to embrace technology, accept new ways of doing business, and most importantly, build strong connections with a range of people, and not just subcontractors, but owners, architects, and regulators. And it's going to require people that will appreciate that we're not going back to the pre-BIM or the pre-SIM ways of doing business. And if you're not involved in BIM today, I've got to ask. What are you waiting for? And it's also going to involve people who will embrace alternative construction approaches. And ultimately, this new era for our industry will require contractors who can read people as well as they can read plans. And because the future of our industry will depend upon our ability to connect to technology, to new approaches, and to new people, I made my theme for the year Building Connections. And as our industry makes this exciting transition, you know, from each party working separately to working together in collaboration, we all need to take that next step to get to know those with whom we will work. And while technology offers us so many ways to interact with each other without ever having to leave our desk, the personal connections that we make are going to become increasingly important and increasingly valuable to you as professionals and to your firms. Now, the younger generation may be using Facebook, Twitter, or other devices to connect to new people or old friends, and that's fine. But none of us can allow the convenience of those technologies to lull us into thinking that business meetings, office visits, and conventions like this are no longer valuable. These personal connections aren't just important to us as individual members, but they're also vital to the success and the long-term vitality of our association. They are the connections that allow us to speak with a single powerful voice in our state capitals and in Washington. And they are the connections that help us truly learn from and understand each other. And they are the connections that will convince the future generations that involvement in associations like AGC are an essential part to any complete and successful career. Because as Mark Twain once said, you know, when I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant 
I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much he had learned in seven years. <laughs> but however that being said, I want to uh, commend the AGC of California for the fabulous job that you've done in bringing, at this convention by bringing so many students to share this experience. And to those students, and I hope some of them are here, it's great to see you here, and I hope that you have, this inspires you to continue your association with AGC. And I think, unfortunately, if you look at everything, there's no institution involved in the construction industry that's better able to build the connections that will help all of us succeed in this changing construction industry than the Associated General Contractors of America. And that's because we've gone to great lengths to make sure that the association provides the best possible connections to the right information, the right programs, and the right people. And of course, as our industry evolves, AGC does not just advocates, it educates. We've had, we took the industry lead on BIM, for example. We were the first to create a guide to use it. We created the BIM Forum, you know, which is a collection of all stakeholders, owners, architects, contractors, subcontractors, vendors, academics, and even lawyers and insurance folks. It's so successful that it meets twice a year and there's more than 250 people that attend each meeting. And appropriately, we've, we've created a four-course credentialing program for BIM. And now we've added civil information modeling, you know, horizontal work, to each and every session. And taking up this charge, the highway division is now hosting a SIM workshop with the Federal Highway Administration and the Oregon Department of Transportation in Portland, Oregon in November. LEAD, we were the, we've created a building to LEAD course which helps our contractors navigate the role in green contracting. Lean construction, we created the industry's first lean construction forum and will soon produce a series of courses leading to its credentialing. And please make sure that you just log on to two AGC websites, agcbimforum.org and agcleanforum.org to really grasp the depths you know, of these two initiatives. We also signed a collaboration agreement with the uh, Lean Construction Institute, LCI, and we were the first association to do so. And we now have three AGC members on LCI's board of directors. Our consensus doc template of contract documents is helping improve the industry by providing a contract that's fair to all parties. And this is one reason why more and more private and public owners, like the Iowa Department of Administrative Services, have moved to consensus docs in an effort to dramatically improve their construction programs. We recently released a new and easier to use version of consensus docs on a cloud-based platform, and it also includes eight new contract documents. And uh, additionally, we're happy to announce that the National Hispanic Contractors Association has become the 36th organization to endorse consensus docs. <clears throat> and of course, as the economy recovers, we hope to see the continued expansion and the use of consensus docs by all contracting parties. As you know, AGC has always been, been a leading proponent of safety. Uh, this year, the AGC launched a new fall protection safety training program thanks to a competitive safety training grant that we just won back in Washington. I'm also pleased to th thank uh, to a new AGC partnership with Click Safety. Our member firms will once again have access to the OSHA 10 and 30 hour programs online for our safety training. In addition to these issues and programs, AGC also connects us to the lawmakers and the regulators that are setting the rules for our industry and making the massive investments that shape the economy upon which we all depend. The fact that you're here means that you're our most active and engaged members. Use your energy and enthusiasm for AGC to build connections that will help keep our association strong and our industry vibrant. Become engaged, both locally and nationally. And I think you'll be surprised, as I have, how much value you gain from participating in an AGC event. And after all, it's all about value for your time. So you've got to try a program, a service, a forum, or a committee that's AGC that's new to you. And if you find it helpful, share that information with others. Remember that your firm is a member of AGC and not just you. Encourage the rest of your team to get involved and take advantage of all that AGC has to offer. 
Encourage the young professionals in your firm and in your community to get involved with AGC. Be an activist in this chapter. And also reach out to your non-construction colleagues and business associates and explain to them how important a healthy construction industry is to expanding our economy. Because after all, construction spending accounts for more than 5% of our GDP. Contribute to the AGC PAC and encourage others in your firm and chapters to do the same. But you've got to hurry and absolutely get to know your elected officials, including your congressional delegation, and get in the habit of contacting them regularly and explaining the challenges of needless regulations and the value of construction investment. Remember what I said about the impact of the personal visits to your legislators. And the first time is always the hardest. We've got to do this because, as President Reagan once said, government's view of the economy can be summed up in a few short phrases. If it moves, tax it. If it keeps moving, regulate it. And if it stops moving, subsidize it. But you've got to be outdone by his other quote that I love that says, government is like a baby's alimentary canal with a healthy appetite at one end and no responsibility at the other. <laughs> so this is the situation that we're faced with, but it's up to you to take charge and to make a difference. As I learned a long time ago, very few people care about what one contractor has to say, but just about everybody cares about what an entire industry has to say. So I hope that you've used this time to, together to build connections and to leave here with a new purpose and a new commitment to building connections with your fellow members, your communities, your officials, and ultimately your association. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate being here.